gentlemen, I'm back again with another edition of Felon's Talk. Today, I'm going to talk about what happens to people who die in prison. And um, I know a little bit about that, okay? I've, you know, seen and been around a lot of people that have passed away in prison and uh, had some help in putting somebody in one of those graves. And I'm not proud of that at all. But, so back when I was younger, if you died in prison, and as well as today, I'm sure the same, the same thing happens today. They contact your next of kin and they send you, you know, tell them you, you, you passed away, if you've been murdered or if it was a natural causes and all that stuff. I think they have to tell them how you died. I'm not 100% sure about that because I just read something that uh, I think it was an officer in Kentucky State Prison said that they weren't allowed to talk about the uh, exact circumstances of, uh, but the guy was still on a ventilator. He wasn't actually dead yet. Um, so I don't know if that pertains you know, to him or not. And they said when the family flew in, the guy was still alive and they went to the hospital and they could clearly see that he had had his throat cut, right? And uh, they, they decided that, you know, they needed to, uh, you know, pull the plug on him because it wasn't going to get any better. And they did. And they got the body and I guess there was an autopsy and all that. I think there is an autopsy no matter what happens. Because there have to, you know, even if an inmate dies of natural causes, I think they have to do the autopsy just to eliminate the possibility of foul play. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure about that I'm right about that. <clears throat> what happens to an inmate if the next of kin doesn't exist or if they don't want to accept the remains. What happens then? When I was younger in the federal prison system, there was Boot Hill, which is a, basically a graveyard behind the prison, okay? Um, there was one in Arizona State Prison. I was there for just like a few months before I transferred back into the feds. And in the feds, there was one behind Atlanta Federal Penitentiary. And I assumed there was one at every um, prison in the country because what are they going to do with your remains if nobody wants you? Uh, they can't just roll you out and throw you in a dumpster. There is a procedure. And uh, I'm sure the Federal Bureau of Prisons has a uh, procedure and... At this point, I got to admit, I don't know what the hell it is, but, um, you know, first of all, there's the autopsy and from my, what I understand now, they cremate you. What do they do with your ashes? I have no idea. None. What would they do with them? You know what I mean? They're ashes for God's sakes. You know what I mean? Um, no telling. I had a friend of mine, his name was, uh, the fuck was his name? Freddie, Freddie. Freddie's brother got murdered in Atlanta while I was there. Um, Butchie Leonard and a sissy by the name of, damn if I remember the sissy's name. Damn, out of Houston, Texas. Somebody will probably remind me. Anyway, uh, they brutally murdered him, man. I mean, they, they really fucked him up, right? And, uh, and I think, uh, and this was another case where they got indicted and, uh, and then the conviction got overturned, just like the one with, uh, um, you know, 
Herbie Sperling and the uh, Aryan Brotherhood when they killed uh, Vinnie Pappas, that one also got overturned. These murders happened in around about the same time. And those two murders were overturned. So, uh, you know, Butchie Leonard ended up getting out of prison. And uh, I haven't really heard much about what happened to him uh, after he got out. He's from Washington, D.C. And he was a pretty good dude, man. And uh, a few years after that murder happened, quite a few years after that murder happened, I was in another prison with the victim's brother. And his name was Freddie Widener. The victim's name was J.C. Widener, okay? And I was talking to Freddie about the murder, and he was, you know, expressing... Uh, you know, how much he hated Butch Leonard for killing his brother. And I guess I could understand that, you know. And uh, anyway, he said when they got the coffin, when they sent the body home, the autopsy, he said they didn't, like when they give you an autopsy, they cut you open, they take out your organs, they weigh each organ, okay? And uh, they make a note. This and then they write the report. They well, he had his head almost cut off. It was pretty brutal murder, right? And uh, to make a long story short, they never put the they never put the organs back in the body. All right, they just left them in. They just put the body in. They left the organs. They put the organs in the box, but they didn't put them back in his body and sew them up. So it was a gruesome, gruesome sight when they opened up that, you know, that box, man. You know, you can imagine the uh, the feelings that, you know, that must have brought upon the people who love this kid. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I don't know, man, what, uh, if that's the procedure everywhere. But if it is, man, chew. I've seen some brutal murders, man. Gee whiz. I mean, if they're not like they're not like morticians or anything. You know what I'm saying? They're not trying to make you look good. They're just there to, you know, write a report. How do you die? You know, they're not even putting the fucking organs back in your body. They just throw them in a basket with you. He said there was body fluids and everything in this place, you know. Mm, right? Anyway, um, so, man, you know, just imagine um, if you lose a loved one in prison, hopefully he just dies of, uh, you know, natural causes. And even then, you know, I don't think they're uh, going to go the extra distance to put the organs back in after the autopsy is done. So, uh, you know, I feel as though, uh, you know, they could go a little bit further. They, they should go a little bit further, you know. I mean, what does it cost you to put them back in and, you know, make, you know, make the guy look kind of presentable before you send him to his family? Um, there's a, you know... I have questions, and I don't know if anybody out there has any answers to these questions, but does anybody know whatever happened to Barry Mills' body? He was 71 years old when he died. Um, did he have any next of kin? Did they want his body? Did they want his remains? Did they ask for it to be sent home? You know, I don't have a clue. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Um... I know in the case of uh, Tommy Silverstein, um, he was, his body was claimed. He had people that loved him and still uh, wanted him and uh, wanted to give him a nice and decent funeral. Um, Pete Early, you know, was in touch with the family and he wrote about it in the book. Um, 
no human contact. So, uh, yeah, but I mean, there's, there's other people uh, as well. I mean, Barry's kind of one of them. I'd like to know what happened to him. If anybody out there knows, let me know. Um, there's a bunch of other people as well. Um, I just talked to one guy recently uh, who got in touch with me through this video show. He told me that they sent his father's remains home and that, you know, he still has the ashes that they provided, a, you know, him a decent burial and all that. Um, I would hope that everybody has someone that, uh, you know, would be willing to take their, their loved one's remains home and, and give them a decent uh, funeral and burial. That's it for the day. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment, ask a question. And if you have any information along these lines, let me know. Uh, we talked about Jive Roberts. He actually died in, in, in 2021. I was mistaken the other day. He died uh, in February of 21, about three years ago. Um, I read somewhere that his aunt, he had an aunt, stayed with him to the end. Now, whether she accepted his remains or not, I do not know. Or he, she may not have even been alive when he passed away, you know. And and if and if she wasn't, then he really didn't have anywhere, you know, to be to to go. I mean, there, she was the only one in his life. Hopefully, she was still alive and she could have, you know, accepted his remains. But that's a question I can't answer. Um, if anybody knows anything about this. I'd like to know. Like and subscribe. Felons talk.